Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Word Feast. It's yet another opportunity that the Lord has given us to study his word and to learn from him. And uh, my name is Joan Wachia and my co-host is... My name is Kelvin Wesonga. It's another wonderful time to continue doing the Word Feast program. Yes, Joan. Yeah, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Uh, so, but before we begin, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come before you this day, we thank you for this opportunity to learn from you uh, and to take our portion from you. Father, we know that it will make our life better, that we will be transformed by it. And Father, we pray that you will go through, with, you will go with us through it from the beginning, right to the end, and all to the glory and to the honor of your name. For it is in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, last time we covered on being a disciple of Jesus Christ, and I hope you've watched that episode. If you haven't, please go back. Uh, I know you will learn a lot from that. So, today we'll be doing uh, spiritual growth. And uh, to begin with it, let me ask Kelvin, what do you understand by spiritual growth? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a wonderful question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know and I believe that... Uh, we're going to do to learn a lot mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. on a matter of spiritual growth. And uh, this program is very rich. And I want to encourage you because uh, we have a number of topics that we've been able to do with the grace of God, uh, which we've done a number of them. So please, if you can find time, go ahead and uh, look for them on our, on our program. Now, uh, just to answer you, answer you, John, the meaning of spiritual growth. Let me let me um, let me start with some verse, a, a particular verse in the Bible, mm -hmm. from the book of First Peter, chapter one, verse uh, twenty-two to twenty-three. I think from there we will be able to maybe get an understanding of what spiritual growth means. So First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. Bible says, "Now that you have pure." Sorry, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Now, this is a state which Peter is saying, mm -hmm. now that you, you are born again. Yeah. Now that you are born again. What is expected of us to do? Because a believer, when you get born again, it's like just the way the term itself goes. Mm -hmm. Born, born, born again. Mm -hmm. So it's like you are born again into a different, or rather a new reality mm -hmm. of life. Take an example of a child. Uh, when a child is born, they're still little. And so they will grow as time goes by. Grow, they will learn how to walk, how to talk, how to run as time goes by. And so they will keep on growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same is true of someone who gets born again. Yeah. Now, here, born again meaning someone who has made a decision to accept Christ Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their lives. And so they are born again into a new reality of life. And so that, at, that, at that stage... They're still young in salvation. They're still little in salvation. So they need to grow, to grow, to grow so as to continue with the journey. Now, allow me to go to uh, chapter 2 of the same, same uh, book, verse 1 to 5. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, 
when you look keenly into those verses of chapter 2 of 1 Peter, mm -hmm. um, the element of growth is being mentioned here, is being highlighted here. Like newborn babies, they crave for milk. That's a newborn baby, a literal newborn baby. Now, for a new believer, someone who has given their lives to Christ yeah. recently, the Bible compares the word of God to the pure milk. But in this case, the pure spiritual milk, obviously referring to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so every believer, the moment they get born again, they believe in Christ Jesus, they need to crave for the word of God. Yeah. Craving in this sense means that... Um, you are in dire need of something, like your body needs something so so urgently. So that should be the same for a believer. Mm -hmm. Crave for the word of God, and this craving should continue on and on. Yeah, and so craving for the word of God as you live, in short means you want to grow mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. and it's only through the word of God you'll be able to grow. Um, let me not touch on verse, verse 4 and 5. I'll come to that later. Now, uh, just to wrap it up. Spiritual growth. Every believer needs to grow spiritually. And salvation is a journey. It's a lifelong journey yeah. that everyone takes mm -hmm. from the first step. Mm -hmm. And so, anyone who is born again will strive to live a Christ-like life and so spiritual growth means becoming more like christ you want to become more like christ so if you want to become more like christ then you'll need to grow spiritually yeah. by engaging in the word that's just an example i know there are many other ways uh, of which we can uh, um, engage spiritual growth yes yeah mm. uh that's 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 wonderful mm. uh so <clears throat> you remember there's a quote by Miles Mondrown to say it exactly. I'll just paraphrase it. Mm. Where he says that, he said that uh, a person who stops growing, when you stop growing, you start dying. So, and that also applies to spiritual life. Uh, we should mm. make it our desire to grow because when we stop growing every single day, mm. then we'll start, instead of going forwards, we'll start regressing mm. backwards. And, uh, you might even find yourself now you've even left the faith. Mm. So a s spiritual gro growth should be something that uh, everybody desires mm. to attain mm. every single day. And it doesn't reach a point where you say that I'm a fully grown Christian. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, a continuous process uh, that goes on throughout life until the day you that Christ calls you home mm. or the day that Christ comes. Mm. It's something that you should uh, desire to continue growing in him. Mm. And I'll, I'll go to s the book of Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. And it says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be you will neither you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this scripture is encouraging. Peter was encouraging believers that mm. uh, that they should grow. And he's mm. giving an, a number of ways that they should grow. They should first grow in, in faith, then go to virtue, to knowledge, so on and so on. Until he says up at the at verse eight that if you don't abound in these things, yani if you don't uh grow in these things, then uh sorry, if you grow in these things then you will not be termed as mm. barren or unfruitful. Mm. And it is the desire of Christ for us to pro for he to see his disciples uh, producing fruits mm. fruits of, of, of righteousness. Mm. So Peter is encouraging. You see that, that in the Bible Peter is encouraging us that we need to grow. And uh if we grow then we'll be fruitful. Mm. Yeah. Now um a babe will never remain a babe mm -hmm. all their life. Yeah. And so even for a believer, when they get born again, mm -hmm. at that time, 
we call them babes in salvation mm -hmm. and so someone wouldn't want to remain a babe all their life yeah. even in salvation mm -hmm. so they will want to grow to grow spiritually and uh, to maturity yeah. so that they mature in the christian life mm -hmm. yeah exactly mm. so uh and now would wonder how do you grow in this spiritual life now you mm. said one of one of the ways is, is in is in going through the uh, mm. is in reading the word of god mm. because that's where we get our our sustenance mm. we read the word we know we grow in character mm. so that's how we grow spiritually mm. so um another way that we can grow spiritually is by being rooted in Christ mm -hmm. and by being rooted in Christ you're rooted to him through faith uh, i remember in um chap john uh john chapter 15 uh mm -hmm. was wait talking about the vine the vineyard that Christ is a vineyard and that we are the branches so uh john 15 verse 4 to Five. Mm. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear a fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Mm. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Uh, so the, the message of bearing fruits is being reiterated mm. there. And for a tree to be, to bear fruit, then it has to like uh, the branches they're the ones that produce fruit mm. and if they're not connected to the to the plant itself maybe it's been broken off and and it has fallen to the ground then there's no way it's going to produce mm. fruit so we have to stay connected with christ and uh because he is he is also our he's the one who stay, mm. give, keeps us grounded to the ground because he's the vine now he keeps us grounded so we can uh stand in our faith when we have faith in jesus christ then he will keep us he will keep us in the faith and keep us growing mm -hmm. and bearing fruit. Mm. Yeah. Um, that, that's, one, that's one of the ways. Mm -hmm. uh, remaining rooted in Christ, being rooted in Christ. Uh, to add on that, yeah. let me go to the book of First Timothy. First Timothy, sorry, uh, Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter... Three, verse fourteen to seventeen. So um, the Bible says, "But as for you, continue in what you have learned, and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it." And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, uh, this is Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy was a young man, a young man, a youth, and uh, he, was, he used to work with Paul mm -hmm. in the ministry. And uh, this is an advice which Paul is giving to Timothy. That as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of because you know those, for those from whom you learned it now. Paul is telling Timothy to be deliberate enough to give himself to the scriptures to give himself to the word to the word of god to training because verse 16 says that all scriptures god breath and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting training and in righteousness so that means in spiritual growth someone will need to be deliberate and intentional enough mm -hmm. to give themselves to the teachings of the word of God. Yeah. To give themselves to rebukes that come from the word of God. Mm -hmm. To give themselves to corrections that come from the word of God. Mm -hmm. You see. And that is what uh, Paul was telling Timothy that the word of God 
is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and all those. So for someone to grow spiritually, they'll have to accept and to give themselves to such. Mm -hmm. And so Timothy is to give himself to such. And the same is true of every believer to use the word of God to teach us, to rebuke us, to correct us, and to train us in righteousness. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's only through the word of God that we'll be able to know how to live a righteous life. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't engage ourselves and acquaint ourselves with the word of God, then there will be no spiritual growth. Yeah. yeah. And um, still, I think that this, this is still related. Yeah, that is back in the book of First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 12 to 16. Whereby Paul was telling Timothy that don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So, Paul is telling, still telling Timothy to devote himself to public reading of the scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Mm -hmm. And these are ways of growth mm -hmm. spiritually. Yeah. And uh, he tells him that, he tells him to be diligent in these matters. Scripture, preaching, and teaching. So that means we all need to be diligent about growth spiritually. We all need to be very diligent so that we give ourselves wholly and deliberately, consciously, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like for example, <coughs> um, Events have been organized, Christian events, mm -hmm. Christian activities have been organized by a group, by a Christian group, maybe a church, maybe a youth group, have been organized a seminar, a leadership conference, prayer conferences, and all these related events have been organized. So for a believer who really wants to grow, they'll, they'll be looking for these opportunities yeah. and for these platforms to go. So that they, are, they so that they continue being taught, continue getting the teachings and the preachings, so that so that they grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. In fact, I've seen that scripture has a lot of a lot of points. Mm. Uh, like he's saying, um, meditate. Like verse fifteen, it's mm. saying, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may ev may be evident to all. Mm. So. This progress is not just for yourself. Like, and then previously he'd said that he got that gift. He said, he's telling Timothy that he got that gift through the laying of hands of, mm. of elders. Mm. And if these elders, people who led you to the faith, um, see that you are growing, then they'll know that they've done a good job. Mm. So, um, and also verse verse 16 mm. says, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Mm. So your spiritual growth is not only for your benefit. Exactly. It's also for the benefit of other people because they will hear you. When you grow, then you are able to, like the way we are, mm. we are we are speaking on now the word of God. Mm. Then we reach out to someone who is listening, who maybe is yeah, still young in the faith. Mm. Then they listen to us and... Um, mm. They grow in their faith. Mm. Um, that is actually a good, a very good thing. Now, our spiritual growth has not only benefited us, but has also benefit benefited other people. Sure, sure. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. mm. So another way uh, we can we can grow spiritually is mm. by growing in faith, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because faith faith is one very as we saw in the book of Romans. Mm. Faith is a very pivotal pivotal mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, at the center of Christianity mm. because um, 
we start we first start we first become Christians when we believe in Jesus Christ and this faith is actually what um we take the sacrifice that he gave on the cross and the innocence that um his innocence mm-hmm. and this is what qualifies us to go to heaven and so um when we grow in our faith then it's a very good thing in our in our spiritual mm-hmm. work mm-hmm. and um we can find we also saw how we can grow in faith in the book of romans mm-hmm. so uh, in the book of romans chapter 10 verse 17 romans chapter 10 verse 17 mm-hmm. bible says consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about god this is an NIV, NIV version mm-hmm. and i know that the versions say that uh faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god which is still the same yeah mm. exactly so how we can grow our faith is by reading the word listening to the word because there are people who <coughs> who are in at a greater level than you in their spiritual work and they have very good insights of the bible and when you listen to them then it also grows your faith mm. uh so growing our faith is one way, is another way that we can grow spiritually sure sure yeah that is true growing our faith increasing our faith and uh trust in god mm. uh uh to add on that yeah i may also say that um uh, another way of which um which can show that you're growing spiritually mm-hmm. or which will help in our spiritual growth mm-hmm. is um deliberate practice of christian qualities i think christ when he was here on earth mm-hmm. when he used to walk with the disciples and the way he used to behave and i think his behavior is what we can emulate the qualities of jesus christ can be emulated and someone can be deliberate enough to live and to follow such and practice such qualities mm-hmm. now maybe maybe you can look most of the qualities of of a believer are usually tied to the fruits of the holy spirit yeah and that can be found in the book of galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verse 22 the fruit of the holy spirit but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law so these are the qualities of every believer and a believer who has these qualities it will show that they are growing spiritually it will show that they are growing spiritually but again we need to remember that these qualities are given by the holy spirit himself so the holy spirit because every believer has the holy spirit in their lives and so the holy spirit if someone is deliberate enough to live lives uh, and practice the qualities of a of Christ Jesus or rather the qualities of the holy spirit the holy spirit will grant them those fruits yeah that fruit of the holy spirit they'll be joyous in you know, what they're doing they'll be peaceful mm-hmm. they will love genuinely they will um, have a heart of forbearance mm-hmm. perseverance they'll be kind yeah. goodness they'll be good to people and practice goodness to everyone around them mm-hmm. faithfulness these these are things that should be evident in every believer's life mm-hmm. if uh these are not evident in the believer's life then it will only tell you that probably this person is not growing spiritually yeah. they need to do they need to do something more mm-hmm. that's what verse 23 says that again such there is no law mm-hmm. yeah exactly mm. so um <clears throat> another way of uh that shows that you are growing spiritually or that will help you in growing spiritually mm. is letting go of the sinful nature mm. the old self 
uh, because spiritual growth and sinful nature do not go hand in hand. Mm. Light does not go in hand hand in hand with darkness. Mm. So as you grow, then you should be leaving these things behind. You should be let you should let them uh, fall behind and grow in your walk in Christ. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say about that? Uh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, because the Bible says that whoever has the seed of Christ in them will yeah. not continue sinning. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit will start the work of sanctification yeah. in, in a new believer's life. Yeah. So the believer will be uh, sanctified each and every day. And sanctif- sanctification means uh, the works of the flesh are being shed off slowly by slowly. Mm-hmm. Each and every day the works of flesh are, are, are shed. Like today last is shed, tomorrow something else is shed off. Something else is shed off. So that is what we call sanctification. Yeah. And that means you are decreasing when it comes to sinning. Mm-hmm. You are decreasing uh, the activity of sin in your life. Yeah. So um, the Holy Spirit will be doing that as much as you are intentional about living for Christ. Mm-hmm. Sometimes someone may not be intentional about living for Christ or or uh, decreasing sin in their lives. And so if that is the state of their heart, then possibly it will be difficult even for the Holy Spirit to do that for them. Mm-hmm. So that means if, if someone, if a believer sins, they should be free to run immediately to Christ yeah. for forgiveness mm-hmm. so that they are forgiven and they are cleansed and they are clean and they are at peace with God. Yeah. And that will help in decreasing the sinful activity, the sinful nature in their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that will show spiritual growth because if sin is not decreasing in, in, in a believer's life, then there is no spiritual growth in that person. Mm-hmm. They're just stagnant. They're there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> then another way mm. of uh, growing spiritually is is uh, looking to Jesus. Uh, and this we can find in Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, so, uh, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And if we look to him and we desire to be more like him, then he is going to help us to grow. Mm. Yeah, We can't do it without Jesus Christ. Mm. And he helps us through the power of the Holy Spirit, mm. which is also what you've just said. And then also we can grow through uh, through prayer. Mm. Maybe before before you go to that point, yeah. just to further strengthen the point that we, we just said. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at this verse 18 of Second Corinthians, yeah. uh, chapter three. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever increasing glory. Yeah. We are being transformed into the image of Christ, mm-hmm. and that is growth. Mm-hmm. And that's what every believer um, is striving and uh, living a, a, to be uh, living a Christ-like life. Yeah. So we are being transformed into the image of Christ, so that we, as we are living on this earth, mm-hmm. everything that we do, our actions, our thoughts, our our our, our deeds. Yeah. All of them mm-hmm. will emulate Christ. Yeah. Will be like of that Christ. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a business of being transformed into Christ. Mm-hmm. That is a growth, spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. nicely put. Um. Uh. So I was saying that uh, another way for us to grow spiritually is through prayer. And um, Philippians chapter four verse six to seven, where it says uh, that we should pray without ceasing. Uh. Mm. So prayer. We talked about prayer in a few episodes ago, and uh, prayer is a very uh, important part of a, a Christian's life. Mm. So if we continue to f- 
to talk to God, to communicate with God in prayer, then it also grows our it also grows our our spiritual our spiritual life, and it also grows our relationship with Him mm. because we talked about um prayer being a a two way a communication mm. a two way communication where we talk to God and He talks to us mm. through His Word. So if we least we read His Word and we pray, then there is no way we can remain where we are. Mm. We will keep growing from 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 one level to the next. So prayer is very important in spiritual growth. Mm, yeah. That's true. Now, something else that uh, I would want to add on what you've said yeah. is uh, the unending desire to be led by the Holy Spirit in this Christian life. Now, um, every believer should have that desire. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that uh, we need to live by the Spirit. That means being led by the Spirit. That means being filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And so having that desire and ending desire to be led by the Holy Spirit in our thoughts, in our words, in our speech, in our actions, in our deeds. Like every time you want to do something, we consult the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We consult God. God, is this that I'm going to do? Is it right? Is it okay with you? Or it's just seeking God. Mm -hmm. you see, before before you take an action, before you talk, before you 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 start um, digesting a certain thought, always do it in light of the Word of God, in light of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so, if someone has that desire every time then uh, they will grow spiritually. They will continue growing because the Holy Spirit will always be speaking to them. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit will speak to those who desire the Holy Spirit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, so, the very last uh, the very last way that um, we thought of about growing spiritually is through the fellowship of 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 believers, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. when you fellowship with believe with believers, then you are able to even stand in your faith because you have your you're connecting and interacting with like-minded people, mm -hmm. and uh, they also encourage you even when you're going through a hard time and uh, um your spiritual growth maybe it has become uh stagnant, mm -hmm. they can encourage you. Then you continue growing. Also, you see other people who are thriving in their in their in their relationship with with God, and you mm. also desire that, and you pursue um, mm. growing spiritually because you you're seeing this person is 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 doing well. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now uh, you've said that could probably be the last point. Mm -hmm. um, mine as well. Mm -hmm. Now um, you've talked about spiritual growth. Yeah. And. Uh, this is a lifelong journey. Salvation mm -hmm. is a lifelong journey mm -hmm. of growth. Yeah. Growing each day, day by day, a believer is expected to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're expected to have that desire in them to grow as well. They're expected to to grow to maturity, mm -hmm. not to remain as babes. I think um, there's somewhere Paul was saying that it's now high time that we need to desire solid food solid food yeah. every believer solid food the word of god solid food so spiritual growth will only be possible if we are intentional and deliberate about growing growing in salvation yeah so it will take you at your personal level you at an individual level to grow spiritually and of course with the help of the holy spirit yes john Absolutely. Mm. So um, now, why do we need to grow spiritually? Mm -hmm. What is the importance of growing spiritually? Mm. And I'll begin with uh, going to Hebrews chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 13. Mm. Um, where it says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm. So we, we, um, we see the very first importance of spiritual growth um, mm. is that you'll be able to discern. Mm. 
mm. between good and evil when mm. you are in tune with the word of god and in, in tune with the holy spirit mm. then you're able to detect exa- um when something is of god and something when is something of evil you can be able to tell and uh you can move away from what is evil and mm. what does not please god mm. and you can al- and you can move at the same time move towards what pleases god mm. yeah sure sure mm-hmm. mm. and then another importance of spiritual growth is it helps us avoid being f- swayed by false doctrine mm. uh so mm-hmm. there's a lot of doctrine that is going on around and some of it is true some of it is false mm. and when you are grown mm. in your spiritual life mm. then you are able to tell what is true and what is not true mm-hmm. because you are well you you are well acquainted with the word of god and you know what is what is what it exa- what exactly it says mm. so no one can sway you and tell you this is how we, this is how you're supposed to uh to live and that that is not how you're not supp- that is that is not how you're supposed to live mm. and you go through people who get swayed by false doctrines are people who have not made an effort to grow in their spiritual life and to grow in their knowledge of the word of god mm. so we now as we've seen it's always going back to the word of god because that is the truth exactly yeah exactly so get yeah. yourself well acquainted with the word you will grow spiritually and you will not be swayed you will not get into cults you will not get into funny funny uh doctrines mm. yes mm. um spiritual growth is also important for effectiveness yeah in ministry especially if if um we are all believers and we want to be in ministry we want to serve god in particular capacities in ministries that will require spiritual growth and so someone who wants to serve in a ministry Paul like Paul says that babes cannot do that it's only those who are mature who uh, who feast on the solid food yeah and so that means spiritual growth is a requirement for someone to be effective mm. in ministry yeah and so that means someone taking the liberate steps to feed themselves with the teachings and all that we've seen here today mm-hmm. yeah going for those seminars going for those conferences going for those summits mm-hmm. that are provided mm-hmm. going for the uh, cashes that are given there going for the worship experiences all these opportunities and platforms which are provided mm-hmm. if if you have an opportunity and a chance and you're available go to them with the intention of growing spiritually yes Yeah. Mm. That is very true. Mm. And uh I would also say um you've you've your that in our spiritual work we will encounter difficulties. That is very normal. Mm. And in the book of Romans I'll take us back to the back to the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 3 to 4. Mm. Where it says and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance mm. and perseverance character and character hope so when when trials come mm. they are here to they don't let them dis- discourage you in fact take them as an opportunity for you to grow because when you come out of a, of a, of a, of, a, of a difficulty then your faith obviously grows mm. your faith in Jesus Christ grows and you are able to also Uh, when other troubles come you are also able to apply that knowledge of how you went through that challenge mm. and you came out strong at the end of it mm-hmm. so don't be discouraged by the obstacles that you meet in your spiritual growth journey uh because that's what will catapult you to, to the next level mm. so we've come to the end of our word feast today thank you for joining us thank you for staying up to this time uh we know that you have learned a lot uh and i know that this will transform you and my hope for you is that you will desire to grow spiritually that you will not remain a babe but you will grow to eat solid food so thank you and goodbye